So let's be honest, that play on Colorado State absolutely sucked yesterday. 39 play, 12th ever in my career. Yeah, the fact that I had won the previous two over the previous four weeks, inconsequential. I gave you Colorado State yesterday a three-and-a-half point favorite in the New Mexico Bowl against Marshall. They lost 31-28. Trust me, it wasn't even that close. That game was over by the second quarter because the Rams simply were outclassed, outplayed, and weren't in the game. End of story. As I've said before, guys, a win is a win, a loss is a loss. There is no in-between. I can't stand guys that always try to make up excuses for how they lost or why they lost. That game wasn't close. It was an awful call. Not the first in my career, certainly not the last. And the fact that I won the previous two, again, inconsequential. But, you know, I'd make the same call again because I really thought Colorado State was to play. And I was in the position having won five of the previous seven days, having cashed in with four of five top-rated 15-dime plays in that stretch, the Presti action, and that's what I did. So today, it's all about trying to get half of those losses back again and trying to finish the week, the betting week, on a winning note. Now, I sucked yesterday, but, boy, all the other guys at the site – Had wonderful days. I'll talk about some of them in just a moment. And I'll get to my complimentary plays, which, of course, again in the NFL, I won last night with the Kansas City Chiefs. So now I'm on a 13-3 and run with the NFL complimentary selections. And I've got three more for this Sunday card. Now, chief among the comp plays today, you know, in yesterday's video report, I talked about Tommy Brunson as he had yet another 150-dime NFL release, his sixth ever since joining the site at the beginning of September. And guys, he's now a perfect six for six. You got him all for over half price off as he scored last night with Kansas City. Last Sunday, of course, it was the Ravens against the Steelers. Well, today he's upping the ante. His first ever and highest rated NFL release to date It's a 200 dime play. It goes on the one o'clock card, and just like all the other plays, you get it for over half price off by using coupon code 200 dimer, 200 D I M E R. It goes at one o'clock. The other big featured play today, well, I think this is going to be the fifth straight Sunday I've talked about it. It's all about Chris Jordan. The 12th ever triple your wager 3,000 star NFL release of his 35 year career. He is a perfect 11 and 0 with these releases. 11 and 0 in 35 years. Last Sunday it was the Chargers 30 to 13 over the Redskins. Two Sundays ago, the Vikings outright 14 to 9. At Atlanta, three Sundays ago, the Eagles 31 to three, crushing Chicago at home. Four Sundays ago, remember Chargers 54 to 24 over Buffalo. This one just as strong. You got all the other ones at a huge discount today. It's the half price play of the day by using his first name, Chris. And how about Matt Rivers? Another blank check NFL release coming off the heels of the Broncos on Thursday night. He is 7-1-1 with those plays this season. The 21st of his career. He's a charter member of the site over 15 and a half years ago. 7-1-1 with these this season. Mismatch of the year. It goes at 1 Eastern time. And it's over half price off by using the coupon code blank. All the other discounts and coupons are over on the home page. Let's get now to your complimentary selections. Um, listen, let's start with the biggest game on the board. Patriots and the Steelers. Um, I gave you the Dolphins on Monday night as a complimentary play because I, to use a quote, uh, to paraphrase what Matt Rivers had talked about last Sunday, when he scored, let me just double check. I just want to look at something here. Yeah, last Sunday, Matt Rivers, his blank check play, happened to be the Panthers against Minnesota. And part in his analysis last Sunday, he said it was just that teams were due. And he alluded to the week prior that the Eagles were just due to lose. And that's why Seattle beat them, one of the reasons that every team was due to lose. And he thought that the Vikings number was due to come up. And that's one of the reasons that he went with Carolina. And I paraphrased and I said that I thought that last Monday night, the Patriots, it was just a time to go against them. They were playing without Gronkowski. They had that long winning streak. But I thought that there was a certain look ahead factor involved here as well. I'll never forget as a reporter one time, um, I was in the locker room and I was just, it was after a game and I was just chit-chatting with a guy 
an NBA Hall of Famer eventually, and we were just shooting the bull and, you know, came up in conversation and he said, do you think that we get up for every single game? And it just kind of took me, you know, I'm a young guy, I'm like 23 years old, and it just kind of surprised me because back in that era, it wasn't an era where guys were making multi-million dollars with their contracts. And he said, and he said, we just don't get up for every game. There's some games we just have to not necessarily call it in, but we don't play at peak efficiency. And that's something that always stuck with me as a gambler in later years. And I've used that and always remember that when I handicap certain teams in certain situations. And I thought about that on Monday night. There's a Patriots team, long winning streak, but they're human beings. They've got to be looking ahead to this game with the Steelers. And I think that factored into the decision to go against them, obviously, on Monday night. And it happened to factor into the way they played. It was just one of those situations they were due to lose. But they're going to rebound today against the Steelers team. Listen, the Steelers have been living on the edge. And again, I will say it once more, it's a bad Bon Jovi song, but the oxymoron for that recently elected Hall of Fame group, is there such a th good thing, uh, such a thing as a good Bon Jovi song? But we'll leave that to our disputing on another video report. Um, the Steelers team has been living on the edge. I mean, they had the rally from 17 down to beat Cincinnati on the road. That back and forth game against the Ravens last week, if it wasn't for that magnificent performance by Roethlisberger with 502 passing yards, they don't win that game. Remember three weeks ago at home against the Green Bay Packers, they were lucky to beat Brett Hundley in that one. It wasn't Aaron Rodgers that was quarterbacking the Packers. It wasn't Brett Favre coming out of retirement. This defense is pathetic. The secondary is pathetic. Grant Kowski and Brady have had some monstrous career games against Pittsburgh, and Belichick has absolutely owned the Steelers during his career, going 10-3 and straight up during uh, his career, including 3-0 and in the playoffs. I just like the Patriots in this one, and I think it's going to be a slugfest. I like the Patriots minus the two and a half to three points. I'm going to go ahead and buy down the half point, and I like the over in this game as well. I don't think the Patriots are going to be able to stop the Steelers either. So I like the Patriots, and I like the un, uh, the over in this contest too. Another game on the late afternoon card, San Francisco is playing with confidence. They got Jimmy Garoppolo two for two as a starter, granted. The wins came on the road, Chicago and Houston beating him, but can't deny he's played well. Um, you know, Garoppolo has made four career starts, two for the Patriots, two for the 49ers, and he's won all four of those games. And his first two starts for the 49ers, he's gone 46 for 70, 623 yards. If there can be a lot of hype and a lot of excitement about a team that's 3-10, and 10, the 49ers have it. Everybody's excited for him to make his home debut here today. And why not? Listen, what have the Titans shown you here of late? This Titans team has certainly regressed. Um, a 12-7 loss at Arizona last week. They're playing on the road for the fourth time in uh, five weeks overall. Yeah, they have 22 sacks in their last three games. That's the one thing they've done well. But keep this in mind. They played against the Colts, the Texans, and the Cardinals, three teams that have lousy offensive lines. The 49ers actually have a pretty decent offensive line when it comes to pass protection, so I'm not too worried there with Garoppolo. Also, the 49ers have a decent run game with Carlos Hyde to keep the pressure off of Garoppolo in the pocket. The other thing is Tennessee's top pass rusher, Derek Morgan, is going to miss his second straight game because of a knee injury. Now, San Francisco's biggest issue defensively has been its run defense. Remember last year, they were like a sieve, giving up 166 yards a game. This year, they've cut it down to 121 yards a game. Last year, they gave up 4.9 yards per carry to opposing backs. This year, 3.9. That's seventh in the league. Last year, they gave up 25 rushing touchdowns on the season. This year, they've only given up 10. The other thing is the Titans had an offensive identity last year. They were able to run the ball effectively with DeMarco Murray and Derrick Henry. But Murray has had an awful year. Why they keep giving him the ball so much is beyond me. He's only averaged 3.7 yards a carry. Derrick Henry's averaged 4.9. But last week in the Arizona game, DeMarco Murray was in there for 47 snaps against the Cardinals. Derrick Henry just 13. Don't ask me why. The other thing is Marcus Mariota has definitely regressed. 10 touchdowns, 14 interceptions on the season. He has eight interceptions in his last four games. 
That's why San Francisco is a one and a half point favorite here. And I'm buying into the hype and I'm going to go with the 49ers in this contest. Uh, on the early card, New Orleans is a 16 and a half point favorite. Listen, they might as well be a 26 and a half point favorite. Do you see any reason to back the Jets today? Bryce Petty is going to make his fifth career start. Big deal. It could be a sixth career start, and I would still go against Bryce Petty and the Jets, who are one and five on the season. They're averaging like under 17 points on the road game uh, in those six road games this season, in which they are one and five. They've got so many injuries. Um, the Saints, I think the best thing for them is they've had a little extra time because they played in that Thursday night game to rest, to recuperate, to become refreshed for this game. Uh, their backfield with Ingram and Kamara are both healthy. I think they're going to be able to pound the ball relentlessly against this Jets front seven. And at the other thing, um, the Jets offensive line has not afforded a lot of protection to whoever's quarterbacking, whomever's quarterbacking uh, this season. I think Brad Petty's going to be under a lot of pressure here. So I'm going to go with New Orleans and lay the double digits in this particular contest. And your final complimentary play, I'm going to go with Minnesota minus 11 at home to bounce back from that loss to Carolina. You know, this is going to be their first home game, the Vikings, since November 19th. They clinch the NFC North with a win today or uh, no, no, because the Lions won yesterday. So they're still mathematically alive. So they clinch with a win. More importantly, remember, they're still vying with the Eagles, who they trail by one game for the number one seed. Uh, in the NFC. So they start the day one day game back. The Eagles play the same time against the Giants. Uh, the Bengals can't run. Joe Mixon, their best running back, is going to be out today. Bengals only averaging like 80 yards a game rushing. Vikings run defense is third best in the league. They only give up 88 yards a game. That means the Vikings are going to be able to tee off against Andrew, Andy Dalton. The Bengals can't stop the run. They just gave up 232 yards in that 33-7 loss at home against Chicago last week. I'm not surprised the Bengals got obliterated at home by Chicago because they were coming off that physical, mentally, emotionally, and physically draining loss to the Steelers in that previous game on Monday night. Um, I think the Bengals will put forth a little better effort, but at the same time, I think the Vikings are going to get their ground game going here because of Carolina last week. Latavius Murray, only 14 yards on nine carries against that very stiff Carolina defense. Uh, the offensive line for Minnesota is probably the healthiest it's been in two or three weeks. Uh, their right tackle is going to be back after missing five games. Their center is going to be back after missing the Carolina game. Of course, nothing ever goes perfect with that Minnesota offensive line because their left tackle is going to be missing today's game. Um, so that means the guy who had been starting at right tackle is now going to switch over to left tackle. But still, they've got four out of their five starters back. Listen, the Bengals gave up 484 yards in that loss to Chicago. All three of their starting linebackers are out. Uh, their two starting uh, cornerbacks are going to be out, Kirkpatrick and Adam Jones. So I think Minnesota is going to be able to pass the ball here. I think Minnesota is not going to have to worry about much of a pass rush against the Bengals. And I think this is a great uh, spot for taking the Vikings to rebound. I know it's a big number, but I like Minnesota in this spot. So you've got these plays. And if I had to rate them for you, how would I go? Um, I think the Saints lay whatever points you want. Okay, that would probably be the premier play. Um, like uh, the Vikings, probably right there with the Patriots game going over as slotted as number two. Saints, Vikings, and the Patriots going over, that would be number two. Then coming in number three, I would go ahead and, uh, yeah, I tell you what, I really like that 49ers pick, and then the Patriots side, and they would be right there at tier number three. So those are your five selections for Sunday. I wish you well, and we'll do this again.